when we stand at the threshold of another era of the church what do we do we need to do two things basically first we need to look back and introspect ourselves to see how we have come through how we have been a part of the church ministry here we need to introspect when we look back and the second thing that we need to look we need to see is we need to look forward look ahead and see what else we can do for the glory of god through the church so when we look back when we introspect ourselves suddenly we see where we stand as a congregation members where do we stand and what is our life here in the church been like they say that in every church there are five kinds of people in every church the first group is we call them squabblers squabblers means critics they are always there in the church they are very destructive to the local church they criticize everything that happens in the church and they are they are, they are either in the committees or they are in the congregation but they do they want to make always a complaint they want they want to always look at the negative side of the things that happen in the church they are the squabblers the critics and the second group of people that we see in the church is the strugglers the strugglers means they have lot of problems they always look for support they always seek sympathy they always talk about their own struggles their own problems in other words we can say that they sap the energy of the others whenever they meet with people they only talk about themselves and they have nothing else to offer and they seek all the time attention and they seek compassion they seek caring you know such group will be there in every church and the third group that we see in the churches is the slackers slackers are those the lazy people they are they don't do any harm <laughs> they are neutrals they don't hurt anybody they just come they listen to the word and they go away there is nothing that they do <laughs> they are very lazy people there are certain people in the church in every church i am not talking about the downy church but every church you see such kind of people that's a third group that we see and fourth group of people that we see are the supporters that we see in a church they extend the financial support they don't do any ministry they don't partake in any ministry but they are very generous they want to support financially they want to support morally they want to support emotionally and they support god servants they support every ministry that's happening in the church and they are there as supporters that's the fourth group of people that we see in every church and the fifth group that we see in the church are the servants the servants we call them they are the people who find a place to minister to work for the lord they want to help in every ministry that happens in the church maybe they are in sunday schools they are in the youth ministry they are in the women's ministry they help in the cottage ministry cottage prayers they help in cleaning the church they are in the choir and also they are in the cooking they are in the serving they are in the volunteer groups ushering groups they always want to take part and do something for the lord and the love of christ constrains them to do that and they are the servants we call them so basically 
there are five groups of people in any church i told you there are scrabblers the critics they are the strugglers they always talk about the problem and they are the slackers who are the lazy people and they are the supporters who support financially and they are the servants who wants to indulge who wants to involve in the ministry of god ministry of the church and this evening i want to ask you as you look back at the history of the church at the ministry of the church even look back for the last 3 years or last 5 years how have you been in this church what is your role that you played as a member of the church here in the last 5 years which category do you belong to the five categories i told you which category do you belong to basically that's the question we need to ask when we look back but at the same time we need to also be concerned about what is the purpose of god for a church unless and until we know the purpose of god for the church our involvement will not have a meaning will not be meaningful will not be effective will not be as the lord wants us to be unless and until we see what is the purpose of god for the church as the passage was rest, read to us in the first timothy chapter 3 we see in verse 15 paul writes to timothy and says here the church of the living god he says it is the church of the living god any local church we are talking including this church is a church of the living god so when we say the church of living god the congregation should be having the life of christ in all of them it should be a living church when i say living church i'm not talking about the structure i'm not talking about the building i'm talking about the members of the church they should be living members in the church they are not spiritually dead but they are spiritually alive taken the life of christ in them they are the people who can really worship god and who can really take part in the ministry of god a church should not be a dead church if you do not have the life of god in you but if you still come to worship the lord it means that a corpse is coming into the church a dead body is coming and trying to worship the lord that's not what god wants to see here even when you look at the god's commendation to the seven churches in the book of revelation we see something that god tells to the church in sardis in the third chapter of revelation verse 1 we see that you have a reputation the lord jesus talking to the church in sardis says you have a reputation that you are alive but you are dead spiritually <laughs> outwardly you look like you are an alive you are a live person but there is no life in you the life of god in you am i am I, i'm asking a question is there a life of jesus christ in all of you as you look back and see where have you been how have you been in this church all these years have you taken jesus christ as your personal savior that's the question we need to ask and secondly what is the purpose in acts chapter 20 verse 28 says the church that jesus has bought with his own blood the church bought by his own blood this is the church jesus has given his life to this church which means that to the members of the church so what is jesus expectation from the church is that we need to be washed in the blood of jesus christ we need to be holy people holy people for the lord you know please turn to the book of numbers i would like you to read uh, i i want to read one particular verse here book of numbers chapter 5 and this is very important and i want to read it for you book of numbers chapter 5 verses 1 to 3 the lord said to moses 
command the israelites to send away from the camp anyone who has a defiling skin disease or a discharge of any kind or who is ceremonially unclean because of a dead body are you listening you know what the lord jesus was telling to the people of israel the community of the church of god the people of israel those days he said anybody who is unclean discard them from the community he was talking about the leprosy actually but here we need to look at this in a in a spiritual sense anybody who is unclean he is not fit to be in the church of god the church of god is a living church and is a holy church the lord jesus has given his life for it and he has shed his blood for it unless and until all the members are washed in the blood of jesus christ you cannot be a member of the church of god any unclean person should be discarded from the presence of god from the community of god's people and there's one more verse that i'm deeply impressed when i was reading uh, please turn to the book of joshua chapter 7 book of joshua chapter 7 there's a another two things that are mentioned there in verse 12 i'm reading verse 12 i'm reading verse 12 the second part of it i'm reading the second part of it i will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction what is lord saying here something very impure something very unclean something which is cursed something which is devoted for destruction unless and until you remove that from among you my presence will not be with you god says my presence will not be with you if you want to see god's presence prevailing in the church of god we need to be willing to take away everything that is unclean everything that is displeasing to the lord you know in the following words in verse 13 there's another very important thing mentioned here go consecrate the people tell them consecrate yourself in preparation for tomorrow for this is what the lord the god of israel says there are devoted things among you you cannot stand against your enemies until you remove them <laughs> are you listening there are two things god was talking here one the devoted things another one devoted people people that are destined for destruction and things that are destined for destruction if you don't remove them the lord's presence will not be there with you and you will not take victory in your life you will not take victory in your life this is what the lord is saying here the house of god the bible says in matthew it should be house of prayer the house of god should be house of prayer for gentiles let all the gentiles come and seek god in the presence of god and they need to cry out to god for their salvation we need to bring many more many more gentiles unbelievers unbelievers non christians into the presence of god how have you done in that regard why are so many uh, benches and chairs still empty today why are we not able to bring people because of a testimony because of a commitment to the lord we can do this but we are failing to do this we are happy that we are here that's it we are least bothered about those who are perishing outside but that's not the concern of god when you look at the church of downy hall brother mitra very graciously has sent me the e copy of the entire history book i was going through it when uh, when uh, when, uh, when reverend dr uh, downy has come here there was uh, a, a importance given for evangelism outreach ministry importance was given for that they were going out and sharing the gospel to the nearby people and that's what should continue even today when we think about the church of god think about the downy it is not the committees it is the prayer meetings that we need today it is not the organizers it is the agonizers we need today 
it is not the money it is the laborers we need today you think you can just give money and keep quiet no what money will do unless there are people who can serve god it is not the listeners it is the soul winners that we need today it is not the planning meetings it is waiting upon god and his will and trying to find out his purpose and go going accordingly that is what needed today in the churches it is not the ordained clergy that we need it is the anointed servants anointed sunday school teachers anointed youth leaders anointed church elders that is what we need today and that's what god is looking for it is not the properties and buildings that we should be concerned about we need to be concerned about the evangelism in the neighborhood bringing people to the feet of the lord it is not the feastings that we are more we should be more interested it is the fastings that we need today in the church it is not the structural change that we need but it is the personal transformation of the people that we need today it is not mission sponsors by the way i want to thank this church for extending your support for indian evangelical missions ministry also it is not the mission sponsors but we need missionary parents basically our children should be missionaries we need to see that our children will go to the unreached people of the world and share the gospel to them it is not more versions of the english bible but we need to be able to see the bible in the language of the tribals we need to be able to see the bible in the language of the tribals it is not the christmas celebration that we should be preparing for it is the preparation for the second coming we need to be looking for you know when we okay let me uh, let me conclude because my time is up i need to catch a bus now at 9:40 to bangalore <laughs> when when we look back i told you there are two things that we need to do one look back when we look back we need to introspect which category do we belong how are we are we doing how are we faring in the ministry of the church here but the second thing we need to see a look ahead look ahead i said look forward what is that the church needs today there are three important things the church need to concentrate upon one is discipling discipleship every believer in the church need to be discipled if you are making a plan for the next 10 years or next 20 years make sure your plan involves discipleship training for the believers unless and until we prepare believers as disciples we are not fulfilling god's command that's what matthew chapter 28 verse 19 says go and make disciples go and make disciples the first thing that we need to see is a discipleship and when we look ahead the second thing we need to see it see it is evangelism reaching out to the neighborhood with the gospel making sure everybody in the neighborhood listens to the gospel the gospel should go out from here and the third thing is missions we need to be concerned about missions the early church if you look at acts the early church involved in discipleship in evangelism and missions those three things were be where they were doing these three things in the early church today many of the church members do not know about the unreached they are not concerned about the unevangelized unevangelized we need to make big plans when you look ahead you know what dl moody said the world's greatest evangelist if god is your partner make your plans big he said <laughs> if god is your partner make your plans big John MacArthur says you are the only bible some unbelievers will ever read you are only the bible some unbelievers only ever read you should be a witness your life should be a witness in bringing people and in evangelizing people and finally i want to quote something 
Bishop Templeton. And this is what he said. A very a strong statement. The church is the only institute that does not exist for its members. If it exists for its own members, it is not called a church, but a club, he says. The church is the only institute that does not exist for its own members. We cannot have activities for our own self. We are here to reach out to people all around us. What is today's problem in the church? What is the basic problem? Visionless pastors, visionless elders, nominal members, spiritual backsliderness, ignorance on unreached people, ignorance on unevangelized groups, disobedient to God's call. All this we see today in our church. This is the problem. In a Helen Keller, Helen Keller was a great woman of God. She wrote many books. She was a blind person. She lost her sight. She lost her hearing when she was 19 months old. When she was 19 months old, one and a half years old. When somebody asked a question to her, they said, what is the biggest problem of men today? Somebody asked a question like this to her. You know what she answered? The biggest problem is having eyes but cannot see. Having eyes but cannot see. She was a blind woman but able to see the purpose of God, able to see a vision of God, able to get involved in God's ministry even though she was a deaf and a blind person. But we are able to see physically, but we don't have a vision of God. We don't have a vision of God. And this is the problem of church today. The Bible says, a church that has no vision will perish. May God bless all of us. May God help us to see what we should be doing for the next 10 years or 20 years ahead in fulfilling God's purpose for his glory. God bless you all. Thank you so much.